and welcome. I'm Norm Stenzel. Uh, I play both offense and defense for uh, TCS. I am in charge of sales and tech support. Uh, we're going to cut in. This is uh, JD Forsyth, who is our uh, one of our uh, development engineers. And in fact, he is responsible for the loud diesel that we're going to either commend or blame. <laughs> Wow Sound Decoder comes in uh, presently two formats. We're working on the third format for it right now. Uh, both without and with our, uh, our Keep Alive product attached to it. Um, the 21-pin, uh, when it comes out, will plug into existing uh, light boards that have a 21-pin socket. And we're also going to be developing our own uh, motherboards with the 21 pin socket on it for various different diesels and those motherboards will have the keep alive built into the mother. Uh, the wild diesel, which is what we're covering today, features over 30 horns, 30 individual bells, multiple prime movers. There in this particular one, our first <coughs> release is going to be all EMD. It, we, we, includes the uh, 567 non-turbo, which is what's running in the locomotive right now, 567 turbo, 645 turbo, and 710 turbo. So we've basically spanned 1939 to the present day in, uh, in one decoder. Now each one of those decoders, I put the little note on the, on the slide, can actually be made into a dual prime mover. And when we do a dual prime mover, there are two complete sets of recordings playing. And they are delayed just enough that the human ear can pick them out. And it is really cool to listen to. If we get a chance, we'll demonstrate it. We also have a feature it's called mainline and switching momentum with a function button. You can change the acceleration and deceleration of your locomotive. These are all presets. There's a there are two. There's an acceleration and deceleration for switching mode, and there's an acceleration and deceleration for mainline operation, and those are set with the CV. And what it is is when you switch from either mainline or switching, it will change the values in CVs 3 and 4, which is your normal acceleration and deceleration, to those values. So if you've got, let's say, a road switcher that you want a, uh, you're running a, a local freight, you can run it in mainline mode till you get to the town and then switch it to switching mode so that you got it. it's a little bit easier to switch without. Throttle operating modes, we've got three different uh, operating modes we'll be demonstrating mainly in prototype mode. Prototype mode uh, is you will set the speed with your handheld but the decoder will decide what notch the prime mover should be based on how hard the locomotive is run. Uh, it does this with our back EMF, and it's quite effective. It is very, since no two locomotive mechanisms run the same way, we have a very simple two-step calibrating process so that you can make it run well with almost any mechanism. The second uh, throttle mode is traditional which is something we're all familiar with. You increase the, the throttle knob and every so many speed steps, the prime mover notches up or notches down. Then we have manual notching, which is almost self-explanatory, but basically you can adjust the speed of the locomotive with the knob, but the prime mover won't do anything except you've got buttons 10 and 11 will notch it up or notch it down as you decide. One nice thing is Manual notching is always active, regardless of if you're in the other two modes. And you hit a hill and it's not going as fast as you think, or the prime mover's not in the notch you think it should be, you can notch it up or notch it down to match uh, whatever you think it should be doing. And uh, it will continue to do that until you touch the throttle, and when you touch the throttle, it will revert to what it thinks it should be. Uh, prototypical braking, uh, this is the same braking that we have in the Wild Sound Steam Decoder. Press the brake button, it's a 
break application. Every time you press it, you get another 20% break application, just like it's similar to the way the prototype breaks work. If you're heading for the edge of a table or a brick wall or some other disaster, pump it five times and it stops and pumps it. I'm pretty sure two weeks break. Yeah. You want the, the emergency break. Yeah, well, it, well, if you hit emergency, like if you've got a Digitrex throttle, it stops right now. But, because uh, that, that's a digital stop. But if this, uh, if you use the brake to stop, you pump the brake five times and it stops right now. We also have working dynamic brakes. This is the first in the industry we have. <coughs> if you press the dynamic brake button the first time, the, dyna the prime mover will spool down to a preset notch level. That's set with the, with the CD. You can set it to idle, you can set it to notch three, whatever your prototype does. And the dynamic brake fans will come on. You press the dynamic brake button a second time, the dynamic brake button fans will increase in intensity and volume, and the locomotive will slow down a preset number of speed steps. You can also set the rate that it decelerates. If you want to just do speed maintaining, you can set, make that setting zero and it won't change speeds at all. Default is five speed steps, so it will decelerate five speed steps when you hit the dynamic brake button. Hit it a third time, brakes go to full, or the fans go to full on, it decelerates again, same amount. You can keep pumping the dynamic brake button, the fans won't change, but it will continue to decelerate to a preset low point. Uh, prototype engines can't stop with dynamic brakes, but depending on what vintage your diesel is and what efficiency the dynamic brakes are, you can take them down as low as about six miles an hour, and you can preset that with the CV. Button six, which is the brake release for the prototypical, for the regular service brakes, also turns off the dynamic brakes. When you turn off the dynamic brakes, the fans come down, the motor will return to whatever notch it was in when you started, assuming you haven't touched the throttle, and the locomotive speed, speed will go back to what it was before you started with the dynamic brakes. I can tell you from personal experience, it's a lot of fun. Coupling and uncoupling sounds. We've got six programmable light functions, or six outputs on the decoder, and any one of those six should be set to any one of 19 different lighting effects. Actually, I think it's 20 lighting effects, now that you've got uh, the alerter. You can repurpose the flashing light as the cooler. Okay, yeah, that's an existing light, that is, but I group it in with the cooler. We'll show you that later. <laughs> I'll let JD take over here when we talk about uh, some of this stuff, and then I'll take over for some of the other stuff. Thank you, Dorm. So, we'll talk about how we record, and then we'll get into our audio quality, and I'll explain why when we say TCS makes the best sound decoder, I will explain the facts and the math behind that to prove we make the best sound decoder. And then the rest of our slide, we'll talk about the performance, we'll do some demonstrations on the prototype mode, the different throttle modes. We'll explain audio assist, which is a revolutionary new feature. It makes programming and decoder very easy. Uh, you don't need to know how to program CVs at all. And then we'll talk a little bit about our company, our support, our warranty, and our uh, quality product. So, uh, first thing you need to know is every sound in the decoder was recorded from an actual locomotive. Uh, nothing is a synthesized sound. Anything you hear came off a locomotive, and that's how it sounded on that locomotive. So this engine was down at Spencer, uh, it's an FP7, and that's the 567 prime <coughs> active. Uh, this was an ST40-2, we recorded a, six, a 645 turbo. Off of that one, as you can see, we're up on the top there, mounting some recorders. It's a lot of fun to go out and record. I love my job, that's for sure. <coughs> it's a GP20, we got the 567 turbo from there. There's over 30 horns in the decoder, and we're blowing them all under air. And all the reverb you hear in the decoder is real reverb. Okay, on to the technical part. 
If you were to combine, well, first of all, TCS uses a CD quality audio player, which no one else in the industry is using that quality yet anyway. CD quality is defined to be 44,100 samples per second at 16 bits of resolution. I'll get into what that means in a little bit. If you were to compare our audio quality with our competition using those two factors, this is what it would look like. And that's not an exaggeration. And I'll explain a little bit more. Okay, so bit depth. What is bit depth? Um, you can think of it as how many crowns you have in your coloring box or how many tones your speaker can reproduce. Every bit you have doubles the amount of tones or colors you have. So at 16 bits, you can create over 65,000 different tones. At 12 bits, you can create only 4,000 in some tones. Now, a lot of manufacturers say they're 16 bit, but they have 16 bit sound <coughs> processors, not 16 bit sound samples. And there's a huge difference between the two. You could have a 64 bit processor running sounds on your computer, but if you're playing a low quality audio file, it's gonna sound low quality. The audio file, the bit depth on that is the weakest chain in the link, the weakest link in the chain. So, it's important to have good quality sound files. And you can hear the difference. As far as the sample rate, the faster you sample, or the more times you send a signal to the speaker, the closer to the original sound it will be. So down here, if you send a lot of samples, and the blue is the original tone, the resulting tone will be very close to the original because you send a lot of samples. If you don't send many samples to it, the resulting waveform coming out of the speaker will not be close to the original. If it's not close to the original, well, it doesn't sound like the original. And that's why it's important to have a high sample rate as well. So, that is why TCS says we have the best sound. We have CD quality sound. That's the best in the industry. And that's important, you can hear the difference. So thank you for listening to that. If you did not understand that, please ask, feel free to ask any questions or just smile and nod. Yeah, you know, later on in the day. So here, I've got them going up on that. You can hear them ramping up, working hard to get uphill. Yeah. But uh, we have no CVs at all to adjust the back of the MF. Uh, there's an algorithm inside that automatically, you know, monitors the motor and makes whatever adjustments are necessary. Everybody else has got at least three. Some have got as many as 12. And for the most part, they really can't tell you how to adjust it. The best you'll get out of most people is try this and see what happens. And it's hit or miss. You know, I don't know how frustrated, you know, we've all been frustrated trying to dial in the speeds on somebody else's, on one of these other decoders and just randomly trying different settings in the back EMF till we hopefully hit on something that works. But when we're all done, we don't really realize what we've done. It's very hard to do. With TCS, you don't have to. You just put it in and it works. I've already pretty much described the different throttle modes. Oops, wrong button. This one. Uh, like I said, prototype throttle mode, that's what he's running in right now, because you he, he heard him adjust, he's adjusting the, this prime mover to run that slow, but try to pull that train we'll, up. We'll demonstrate that. So, uh, we'll accelerate, we'll notch up. As he crests the grade and goes down, we'll notch back in. And that's all automatic. We're so ramped up, we're cresting the grade, so it's notch back down. Now the whole train is pretty much crest of the grade and now we're just coasting downhill and I the notch one. Ooh. <laughs> I'm gonna adjust this real quick or we're gonna uncouple it here. Put the brakes on for you. Great, I got the train break my oh, way. <laughs> That should work. Okay. We'll go back up the hill, he's ramping up. Press the grace, that's ramping down.
This will also tell you where your, your layout is level or not level. <laughs> I, had, I ran it on mine and got a great discovery as to places I didn't know I had grades. <laughs> But that's prototype mode. Traditional mode, <clears throat> traditional throttle mode is what we're used to with most everybody else's decoder. It all clicks. You increase the throttle and every so many speed steps, it notches up, notches down. Now one thing this, this thing does is if you, say, go from zero to, say, 50% throttle, it's not gonna go through speed step one Speed step two, it's not going to stair step. It, it, it 50 percent calls for, you know, depending on what notches, notch it won't you know, stair step right notch. Yeah, or notch, it won't go through notch one, notch two, notch three, notch four. It won't stair step going up. It'll go directly to whatever notch corresponds to, just like the prototype would. When the engineer pulls that throttle back, if he takes it from idle to notch four, it doesn't stop at notch two, notch three, and, not, and then go to notch four. It goes directly to notch four. And this does the same way. Now, if you accelerate slow enough, you can experience each individual uh, notch setting. But if you, same thing if you decelerate. If you're going along at notch eight and you cut it down to, to zero speed, that prime mover is going to go from notch eight directly to idle. It's not going to stop at each individual notch. There's nothing more aggravating than bringing a locomotive to a stop, and it's still at a high notch rate when it comes to stop, and then it notches down one notch at a time down to idle. That's totally unprototypical, and it's really annoying if you know the difference. Yeah. I'll give a quick demonstration of that. I'll have it sitting still. I'll use manual notch, and we'll ramp all the way up and all the way back down to here. Uh, we might. Here we go. Mm -hmm. right, we'll work back down. Now, conversely, if you slow down slow enough, it'll you'll you'll hear the individuals not sure. As you can see, it just goes right to it. There's no so it's very dynamic and uh, it's very very prototypical. There's over 140 files per prime mover, so lots very realistic. Then manual notch mode uh, is what he just demonstrated, uh, just using the buttons. And manual notch is active all the time, so. You have basically, you can play with it to your heart's delight. So if you hit a grade and it's in notch four and you want it to be in notch eight, you just notch it up with the, with the manual notch buttons mm -hmm. and just go screaming up the grade, but you can go up the grade at four miles an hour in notch eight, you crush the grade, you can pull it back, just like the real engineer. We also have realistic braking. Uh, there, every time you press the brake button, in this case button seven, there's a 20% brake application. So you can slow it down prototypically in steps, just like the real engineer, just like he's doing an error reduction as he's coming to a stop. It'll also start, it plays random brake squeals and grinds as it comes to a stop. You wanna? Yeah, we'll give a quick demonstration. We'll get them going fast. I'll just press the brake once. I'll come to a slow stop. And then I'll give another demonstration where I hit the brake five times and we'll knock over all of our, our passengers and our engineers. Let's 
one thing we do experience is that ours decelerates and accelerates at the same rate the prototype does, and that does take X amount of seconds to get the prime move up. <laughs> but I press the brake, we're braking now. So this does more of a slow stop. Oh, there's 20% brake application. There's your 100% slim and warm brake application. No, you want to try uh, demonstrating, rather than me just describe the dynamic brakes, you want to try? Yeah, we'll just demonstrate them, we'll uh, wait till it's coming down and we'll put the dynamic brakes on. I'll get you trained yet. <laughs> Amateurs. Exhaust fan sound kicks on, but we're maintaining the speed. Another press, the fans kick on, the primary primary mover notches up again for more braking power. We're starting to slow down. And we'll come to a complete stop at our train break. So that button. That functional life of bring to stop also. He brought it, well, he, he used the train brakes to actually stop it. Okay. Yeah, dynamic brakes, uh, basically what they do is they turn the motor into a generator, mm -hmm. but at the lower speed, lower RPMs, that braking force is really ineffective. So, uh, many locomotives can't bring the, the mm -hmm. prime mover or the engine to a stop using the dynamic brakes. But they're most effective between what model we have, like, uh, around 18 miles per hour. Some of the new ones can get you down to two miles per hour. Yeah, the dynamic brakes in that particular engine were probably somewhere around 18 or 20 miles. Mm -hmm. But it, it's now as much fun to go downhill as it was to go up. <laughs> <you know. laughs> Keep alive. Yeah, don't do anything. I just... Yeah, that's what I got yeah, yeah, I've used Keep Alive. Let's see, is it lighting or? No, this is wild sound. Huh? This TCS wild, wild sound. sound. Oh, are you doing it now or? Yeah, or it started at one o'clock. Oh, it did? Oh, okay. Oh, sorry, I didn't want to. That's not a problem. Yeah, so keep live, it's like a battery backup. It's um, great if you have a spot to dirty track or your engine's going through a switch, and it won't do that. You know, it's weird. It's, it's really annoying when you run them along and all of a sudden you get by dirty track and all of a sudden your prime mover starting over, it turns on, that's kind of ramp all the way up. Keep alive, we'll keep it from doing that. We'll just keep you powered right through those spots. So uh, it's great for brass engines, um, if you have poor power pickup, or trolleys with overhead wires. Um, TCS sells uh, two Keep Alive products and they're compatible with any other manufacturer's decoder. Uh, you just have to know how to hook them up. The blue wire, there's two wires in the keep alive. The blue wire ties into the, the blue positive main of the decoder, and the black or the white stripe wire goes into the decoder ground. Uh, TCS uh, really started pushing keep live in 2011. Since then, others have copied us, but we were the first, and we are still the only ones to have keep alive built in the decoder. That's got a momentary button on all the radial tracks. Mm -hmm. He was too lazy to turn the throttle off. He just takes his foot, finger off the button to stop the engines when he put them away. Well, now they come off the back of the ground. <laughs> so it does take some getting used to, but it's a really nice feature. It is very nice. Audio assist. Take it away, Maestro. Okay. 
I'll bring the engine back down here. Um, basically what audio assist is, you will hit button eight four times and the decoder talks to you and tells you how to program it. You don't need to know any CVs, you don't need to look it up in your manual, it tells you what to do. All you have to do is listen. So at this point, I will stop talking and I will let the decoder talk for me. Uh, is this on the programming crash? Or no, this is anywhere. Lane? You can do this while it's going around the lane. lane. It's easier to hear it if you just let it sit in front of you. Welcome to audio assist. Use button one to hear the sound programming options. Use button two to hear the lighting programming options. Use button three to hear the motor control programming options. Use button four to hear additional options. Use button zero to exit audio assist. Bye. So as you can see, there's a lot of things you can do. And I'll just highlight some of them and I'll give you one or two examples. Mm -hmm. uh, can I have a point, please? Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, over here, and this is in the literature that comes with the decoders as well, so you can uh, use it as a reference guide. Uh, but once you get used to audio assist, you can program things really fast. Um, I'll, I'll give you a demonstration of that, but you can interrupt it. You don't have to listen to the lady finish talking. I wish I could do that on my wife. Sorry, wife, if you're listening. I love you. But you can interrupt her, and you can program things really quick. So here's what some of the things you can do. On the sound programming menu, you can set your the master volume. You can set the type volume. By type, I mean you can set the volume of just all the whistles, like just the bells. Um, you can also make any sound play on any button. If I wanted to, I could have a different bell on every single button or a different horn on every button. You can totally customize your throttle. You can do that in audio assist. Uh, on the lighting menu, you can program your lighting effects. You can remap lighting effects, so if you don't want the green wire to be controlled by function 1, you can put it on function 5, and you can make it a marsh light. You can do it any way you look. Uh, in menu 3, you can calibrate the locomotive, the prototype mode. Uh, I'll explain, I'll give a demonstration on that one's really neat when we get to it. Uh, you can also do speed matching in the, in the motor menu. Uh, there are user presets, which are like alternate factory defaults, but you can set it up. So let's say I'm running Norrin's layout, and he was running Baltimore and Ohio that day. I'll set everything up for B&O. But on my layout, I like Pensy, so I'll run Pensy on my layout, and I can have the two in presets, and a couple presses of buttons, switch back and forth between the two. Uh, you can also do some individual resets. You can select a prime mover, and you can make the prime mover dual enabled if you have like an E8 locomotive. You can do all of the audio assist. So, again, enough of me. Uh, let's let the decoder talk. Um, I will change the lighting effects. I'll make the headlight a Mars light or something like that. So, here we go. We'll enter audio assist mode. So I'll pick the white wire, as that's the front headlight. White. Now this I'll pick which light effect I want. Single pulse stroke. Okay. Thank you. Single pulse stroke. One. Rule 17. Rotary beacon. Mars. And you can rotate through all the light. Gyro light. Flashing light. Gyro light. We'll go with the gyro light. You can pick which direction it's active in. Reverse. Both direction. Forward. Reverse. We'll make it both directions. Both directions. When you've got it set up how you want, you hit 8 to save. Saved. 0 to exit. Bye. Now, my headlight should be on. It is. And we're flashing it. So that's how easy it is to program. Mm -hmm. And my people is keeping it going, too. So that's how easy it is to reprogram your lighting effects. You can reprogram your sounds just as easy. And now I'll give a demonstration of calibration. Uh, in prototype mode, as you saw earlier, it uh, automatically picks what notches should be in based on the load. 
So you can calibrate it. So let's say you want it to be in notch 8 when it's running with four cars up the hill. You can set it to do that, or you can have it be in notch 8 when just the engine's going up the hill. So I'll go ahead and I'll show you how to do it. We'll go right to the motor menu. One, to use button one to do speed matching. Use button two to calibrate your locomotive for prototype throttle operation. Calibrating is a two-step process. At any time, you may use button nine to return to the previous menu, or press zero to exit audio assist. To get started, run the locomotive on a straight and level piece of track. Speed step 15 of 128 without any I don't have level tracks, so I'm just going to run it downhill. The wrong couple will run it downhill, and this will be our idle condition. Calibrating is a tubes calibrating. Please wait. Calibrating, please wait. Step one. That's it. We just calibrated our low end. Now to calibrate the high end or the non shake condition, we'll run up a hill with a train. When the locomotive is ready, press button 2. Calibrating, please wait. Calibrating, please wait. Calibration complete. Use button 5. So that's it. That's how we use to calibrate the locomotive. And now we think we're going up hill, we're going up to non shake there. So as we press the hill, it's starting to come back down. And that's our calibration. There he goes. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay. Since there's, since there's no two locomotives that have mechanisms that work the same way, we this way you can set the back EMF to respond correctly to whatever, you, whatever however stiff or free your mechanism. Like we said earlier, there's over 30 bells and 30 horns in the, in the locomotive, and you can rotate through those without even going into audio assist. It's just a function button. I'll show you that and we'll switch it up a little bit. I'll put this guy on. This has the 6.5 prime mover actor so you can hear some of the different prime movers. That one might be on three. Yeah. Well, I apologize. It seems like someone back at the booth changed this song. I don't have control of that one. But I will show you how to change your prime mover on this one. Apologize for that. Well, I'll show you how we use this. We'll just go back into audio assist. Welcome to Audi EMD. I know the menu's fast, so I just skip right to it, and I can rotate through all of them. EMD 645 turbo charged. EMD 567 turbo charged. EMD 567 non turbo. EMD EMD 645. What is 645? Charge saved. Bye. And now we have a turbo charge 645. All right. Show that off a little bit and I'll go back to the horns. Do it again. I need to go back to engineering school. Engineering.
there's a preview of the 645 for you, but we have about seven minutes left, so I'll keep moving along here. Okay. So we'll give a demonstration of the horns on uh, button two. It plays the horn as long as you hold it. Button three is a short tube. And four plays a pre-recorded grade crossing. And it's really easy to change your horn. You just hit button nine. Blanco, E2, three chime. And then the nice lady even tells you what the new horn is. Mm -hmm. You can disable that voice, uh, the rotate whistle feature, if you want to. So it'll still rotate your horn, but you won't hear her talking while you're operating down the main line. Blanco, two, chime. Favorite horn? You can just reverse your directions. And now it'll rotate backwards through the horn. They're all in alphabetical order, so we make it easy for you. And that's your rotate horn bell feature. Okay, light mode and sound mode, I'll go over this real quick. Uh, especially with diesels, guys are putting lights in everything on a diesel. You know, headlights, cab lights, step lights, marker lights, rotating beacons. But you, if you have a sound decoder, what buttons do you use for lights? What buttons do you use for, for sound? Well, with light mode, sound mode, you don't have to make that decision. All the buttons are available for lights, and all the buttons are available for sounds. Press button eight twice, it'll go from sound mode to light mode. Press it twice again, so it goes from light mode to sound mode. In whatever mode it's in, all the buttons are dedicated to either sound or, or lights. You can also make some sounds and lights dual mode so they'll work in either one. On uh, a steam decoder we make the generator and the headlight go on together. Uh, now if you have a tablet and you push the eight gun, will it change the screen of what is horns or lighting? Uh, that I couldn't tell you, I don't know. Uh, okay. Are you I'm using a tablet as a throttle? Yeah, 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 you got the JMR, you can use it on the... I'm not sure what the J. I've never used the yeah, JMR. It shows tablet. like lighting, horn, and everything, and I know if you said to hit the button, will it change for lighting? I don't switch? think so, because it's just okay. treating it as a function button. Oh, okay, I got you. It suggested the JMR, I'm sure they could do it, but at this yeah, point it does yeah, not. Right, exactly. But this allows you basically all your buttons are available to do anything you want uh, in, in either column. Right. And uh, you can make some dual service. Or in fact, you can make all of them dual this service. This thing will bring up 28 buttons. Yeah. yeah you, know, you, you, can, and you can remap all this stuff to any one of those 28 buttons. Right. Uh, we do have an online program. This is on our website, an online programming tool. There are some uh, things in this thing that are not in uh, audio assist and they do have CVs to adjust them. Uh, we use index CVs for those. It's a combination of four CVs, 201, 202, 203, and 204. That gives us thousands and thousands of combinations uh, and we've used quite a few of them. Uh, this is not a programming, it's not a programmer, it's just basically a calculator. You just pull down menus to figure out what you want to set it to, and it tells you what values to set those to. Now, on a, another point, JMRI now works with the WOW sound decoder. We've been working with them tirelessly over the last few months, and any WOW sound decoder made after 11414 on positive will work. There are some earlier than that might work, but this is when we actually had something to test. Okay. Uh, before that, we weren't sure, and there were some issues, some timing issues that once we got the software, JMRI had the software to where we could test it. Everything from that point on does work with JMRI. Support and service. Uh, TCS has a goof-proof warranty. We were the first in the industry to have it. What that is in a nutshell is you send us a lump of coal, and if I can prove it was a TCS decoder, we will replace it. It's technically a one-year warranty, but to my knowledge, we've never enforced it. Uh, the one-year 
part is there so we can protect ourselves if we have repeat offenders that right. we can take advantage of it. Take advantage of it or keep making the same mistake over and over and over. Uh, we have a dedicated section on our website that covers the Wild Sound Decoder. There are instructional videos. Currently, all the instructional videos are for Steam, but watch very shortly the diesel videos will be in place. Uh, we have uh, full-time tech support when I'm not here. <laughs> but uh, if you call the tech support line, I will be the person you normally talk to. Uh, we do have uh, e and also email support, and I'm generally the one answering the email. But uh, uh, we won't stop until you are satisfied with the solution. Norm speaks English, and there's no machines you have to go through to get to. I'm in Atlanta, but I don't have a southern accent, so uh, you should be able to understand. But I do y'all the best of <laughs> What's coming next? Uh, obviously more, uh, more prime movers. The first decoder is all EMD. Uh, we cover 1939 to present day and the present one in EMD. Uh, if I had to guess, I'd say the next one's probably going to be GD, just based on what we have in the can at this point, but that could change. Uh, if I had my druthers, it'd be Alco, but right. that doesn't count. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to go after all of them. Uh, just give us the time to do it. So it's not available in end scale yet? Right? Not yet. Uh, we hear you, though. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the large scale guys. And the large scale guys. Uh, there's only so many hours in the day, and we're working hard to take care of everybody. But uh, you know, we haven't forgotten you. But I, we'll get it as quick as as quick as we can. Uh, that's it. I'm open to questions, and then we'll get out of the way. Yeah, we'll, I'll start packing up and welcome any questions.